Hello there, this is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky and we're having a look at Affinity Designer. In the previous two videos looking at Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo we looked at ways of cutting into this text to give a shape that is going to go in between the top layer of the letters, the swing and the bit underneath where it says music. And we did it first, we did it with a um, turning them into bitmaps, sending it into the photo and then using a warp mesh tool. You can do that by letter by letter, or you can do it as the whole word all together, depending on which way, how much distortion you want. And then the other way to do this was to use the um, Boolean tools where you're using the add-in or subtraction. And in that case, we were using a subtraction where we were cutting bits from the letters. Now, another way to do this would be to use the node editing tool. And with the node editing tool, the good thing about it is that you stay completely vectored because you don't send it off to make a mess with it with the warp editing tool. And it's uh, always going to have the sort of good sharp edges as you get with vectors. It's also uh, possible to that you can so it doesn't just subtract, it doesn't just add. It's uh, a little bit of both. And it's a bit more purposeful in the way that it works with these text, uh, these letters where we're going to change the shapes of them. So let's just get into this and uh, see what we're going to do. First of all, what I'll do with this is got this one um, swing music as one piece of text. And what I want to do is I want to change that so that it is going to be convert to curves. So, so we're converted into curves. It's no longer uh, text anymore. OK, and it's uh, still all grouped up. So we're going to ungroup that. And now it's going to be all in separate letters. Now what I want to do with this here is I want to get this uh, layer, this uh, le music sort of thing. I want to just move it up a little bit further. So I'm going to hold my shift key, move it up and have it a little bit closer. And I want to use the same line as the guide for the top section as I do for the uh, bottom section. OK, and another thing that we can do with this here to make it a bit easier to work with is we can go to our view and turn it into the wireframe view. So let's uh, start by working on this S. OK, so it's moving closer so we can see it a bit better. And we've got it selected with the ordinary selection tool over here, the move tool. And now we're going to use the node tool. So I've got the node tool selected. Now when I get closer to the line there, you can see that it gives me a little sort of um, marker to show where the node's going to be. If I want to put a node in there, and I've just got to tap on it once and I've turned it into a node. And there I want to put a node down the line over there. Now one way of doing this here is be to just get there and just delete it. And uh, that's not the best way to do it because these two nodes here are going to be smooth nodes still. Um, I suppose we could do that way. So let's just do this way. So we'll uh, kind of select those two nodes there. And then what we have to do is we turn those nodes into sharp nodes. And so we've got a straight line in between the two now. And then what I'll do is I'll put a node in the middle of that there. And I'm going to turn that into a smooth node. And then I'm just going to make that so it goes on to the line. So you get a nice sort of um, follow of the line there. And we haven't messed about with the shape, this shape here before it comes up to the line. So again, we're going to um, put a node there. I'm going to put a node over there. I'm going to get these two nodes here. Just going to delete them. It's fairly close to the line already, but at the same time, let's just make it even closer. Get that, turn that into a smooth node because it's a curve we're trying to follow and not a straight line. And then we just move it and we're on the line there. Sometimes what you need to do is you need to go in even closer still and just uh, move it so it's completely over the line there. It just depends on how um, how exact you want to be with this. And that is good enough for me as it stands at the moment. So go on to the next letter and same thing again. Put two nodes in there, get these two at the bottom here and delete those. And then I'm going to put a node in the middle. I'm going to turn it into a smooth node. That gives me these uh, handles here I can use if I was uh, moving it that way. Or I can just move it to the line there. And then just adjust that there just to make sure that it's completely on the line there. These here are sharp nodes over these. This one here is a sharp node. And that's a sharp node. And this one in the middle here, I say I made that into a smooth node just so that it follows the curve better. Move across here to the next one. Put my nodes in, extra nodes in there first of all. In fact, another way to do this, what I could do with this, instead of putting extra nodes in there, if you're steady enough with your hands and you're just working with straight lines, I can just move that there and hold the, I held the shift key down so it goes up straight. And then on this one here, again, move it up, hold the shift key down, it goes straight to the line there. 
and uh, if you're working with straight lines and moving just straight up and down you can do that but if you've got to move at an angle there don't hold the shift key it's probably better to make the two nodes first of all and again we're going to put in an extra node there we've got a shift um a smooth node in there now move that up to the line and we're done and just get that there just move it better onto the line i'm using a trackpad here it's my preferred way of doing it of course, if you were doing it in the um, iPad version of this uh, application, you could even get um, using your Apple Pencil to do it. So again, we're going to just do uh, this easy way of doing it with the extra nodes in there. First of all, delete those. That's good enough. We don't need to do anything like that. Now back onto doing a curve one. Let's just uh, show you again with the curve one. So I'm going to select the curve. It's not letting me select this one here. Sometimes that happens. What you have to do is you have to select your... Um, uh, move tool select the uh, the letter maybe you have to come out a bit oh, that's weird that is. it's not let me select the G I don't know why that is okay now I've got the G sometimes you have to go to a particular place within the letter to be able to do it now I can go to the node editing tool and that's handy because I've got some nodes that are really quite close to the line already so I'm not going to actually put extra nodes in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get that node, just move it a wee bit, a wee bit closer to the uh, line, our uh, guideline. Same with that one over there. Then I'm going to get these two here and turn them into sharps. And there you go, turn into sharps. And then I can move this here and put it onto the line. And then I just need to adjust this here so that it follows the line better. All we need to do then is move on to the next word underneath. So with this one here, let's uh, get to our move tool. Let's get our uh, um, a line, and I'm going to bring this down just a wee bit. I won't have that much a gap in between. Okay, so I'm going to use a shift key so it comes down straight below it. Then I'm going to go to back to selecting uh, the word music. Let's do it with a marquee select. Get all of that word there. I'm using the uh, up arrow on the keyboard to move it up and I'm just going to move it up so that the uh, M and the C are in the right place where I want it to cut. Now on this one here what I have to do instead of um, cutting away I'm going to have to actually sort of make these uh, letters a little bit bigger. And that's no problem we can do that really easily. Let's uh, get and work with this M first of all so let's zoom a bit closer into this here and the first thing I'm going to do is go to the node editing tool, editing tool. Um, I'm going to just move this down here manually. I think I can do that safe enough without uh, messing it up. And then this one here, move that up. And I could put another node in the middle of that, but I'm not going to bother. I think it's good enough. This one here is going straight up, so I'm going to move that up. Uh, got my right, I got my uh, right click tool there, so let me just try that again. So I'm moving it up and putting it on the line. I could do this one here. Uh, I'll just do this one manually. I'll move this one up here and put it onto the line. And again, that's uh, good enough. Same thing's going to work with this one over here. I'm going to move this straight up and put it onto the line. Move this one straight up, put it onto the line. Again, it's uh, good enough. If we're getting close, you can see that there's a bit of a, a bit of a gap there. Let's just make it perfect. Put it onto the line there. Put a node into the middle to make it follow the curve. And then I've got to convert that into a uh, smoothie and put it onto the line and then this one over here again because i was working with it further out i can just see there i didn't get it quite right and actually as i was moving it there because i was close to the edge it actually moved a little bit to the right there as well but i'm not going to worry about that for the moment okay because this is just a demonstration video with this one over here this side here i could get these two together and i've got them both selected and hold the shift key and move it straight up and put it onto the line and move in a bit closer so I can see it a bit better. Now I'll just adjust it um, node by node and put that there. And for this purpose it's close enough but we could put a node in the middle if we wanted to. Now with this one over here with our S, now I think the best way to deal with this one here because it's nowhere near to the line is it probably if I make the letter a little bit bigger you have to work it out for yourself really when you're doing this. You could just leave it as is, so it's completely under and doesn't get cut at all. Or what you could do is you could get your um, selection tool here and then just um, bring it up like that. 
So I've just uh, made the letter taller. I've kind of distorted it. And then go into your node editing tool. So I'll put a node over there on the line. Put a node over there on the line. I've got to turn those into uh, sharp nodes, those two there. I didn't get it. Let me just try again. Select it. Hold down the shift key so I could select the other one separately. Convert it into a sharp. And then this one here is already a um, smooth one. So all I've got to do with this is to bring it down onto the line and then adjust these handles. Bring the handles down there and bring this down better to the line there. That's the thing when you're getting closer to this you can see a bit more about how close you are to the line. Okay so that was the S dealt with there. Let's zoom out of that now. So that is how you do that where you're working with the text and you want to add a bit here and take a bit off there and you don't want to sort of do it with the mesh tool in uh, Affinity Photo and you'd rather keep it all as uh, vector drawing. So once you've got that as a vector drawing then you can go back into your pixel view mode or your retina pixel view mode. We'll go to the retina pixel view mode. Go back to the radius, change that up so that it's a nice yellow. It's a bit grish on that but it's a complementary colour so <laughs> we're not worried about it too much. Let's just turn the time that yellow down a little bit alright and make it more of a some mustard sort of colour. That's better. Okay, so we can put our um, des our uh, designs into it. We can um, turn it into a bevel or emboss. This is the bevel emboss tool. When you're working with the bevel emboss tool, it actually works with the outline as well, and it sort of um, embosses the outline here as well. Getting closer, you can see how that works there. So that's put a uh, effect on this one here. If you don't do it with the um, bevel emboss tool. So if instead we go for the uh, 3D tool, that just works on the uh, letter shapes themselves. It would be nice if this came with a sort of flat edges on here and sharp edges on the corners, but it doesn't do that. I've got other applications I can use to do that. Uh, you can change the radius on this here and make it so it's completely sort of rounded. Uh, we can have just a small bevel on there, or you can change the opacity of it as well if you want to. And then the other possibility that we could do with this here is if we wanted to, we, we could put an um, outer glow onto it as well. Let's put an outer glow on it. And uh, if it's um, a glow outer glow of white, we're not going to see it. Let's change this to a different colour. And just so that we can see it, we'll put blue in there. And change the radius. Put a big radius on there because of the fact that we've got the outlines on it already. And we've got a, an outline. You can do all sorts of things with this here. You can put an inner glow on it as well if you want to. But as soon as we've got it done in 3D, it's not going to make a lot of uh, difference. So that's with the inner glow and it just kind of destroys the 3D effect. So however you want to do it for your design, it's up to you. So this is Dave Allen for Good and Geeky. Okay, bye-bye now. Talk to you again soon.